Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to Play It Painted Live. Time to start another live feed. I'm going to go ahead and shoot this one up to the homies and let's see who is going to be around to watch this. So it's going to be another prep video, so nothing, uh, nothing too weird. What happened? Uh, it just doesn't let me share the stream anymore. Okay. I guess not, man. <laughs> We're just going to do the damn thing. Okay, you know how it goes. Uh, let's go ahead and put the YouTube chat viewer back up on screen here. So if you're just joining us, welcome to Play It Painted Live. Let us know what you're painting or what you should be painting. Tonight's topic, preparing guild ball butchers. Hey, what's up, everyone? What's up, uh, Blade Wolf and Albert and Andrew? Hey, man. Blade Wolf, you were at the event, dude. You were there. That shit counts. You were there for like at least four minutes when I was there and I saw you. <laughs> All right, man. So we're going to do the damn thing. Here we go. Uh, tonight, we're going to work on a commission because screw it, right? We never stop working. We never stop working. Uh, so I got to work on a veteran brisket here. Now, check this out. Yeah, don't worry about it, man. You could be at the event. It's okay. It counts. Veteran brisket, one of my favorites to paint. Oh, uh, I thought for sure this would have been a sealed, you know, totally closed across the top, but it's not. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to handle this another way. Boop, 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 boop. A hot second. That's right, sir. Ooh, no rest for me, man. I'm gonna just get back back on that damn saddle. We did our extra life event today, and uh, for those of you that were there today, thank you for coming. Thank you for donating. Um, yeah, it's a big deal, man. We're we're pushing towards the 1K mark. I do want to hit it, and I do have a couple of raffles left, so we could actually get there, people. Let's see what we get. All right. So first things first, though, gotta work on the damn minis. I'm just gonna give myself enough putty to stamp this putty, All right? And for a single 30 mil base like this, it doesn't take much. Why aren't you resting, man? No rest for, ain't no rest for the wicked. That's how we do. All right, <laughs> you make a solid point, sir. I don't know. I don't feel like resting. <laughs> we still got shit to do. All right. Uh, let me give myself just a little bit of lubrication on my fingers in the form of water, people. <laughs> you did get to pick up Reverse Flash. Oh, that is that is one of the models that I want. Well, I got to paint one for Nelson, so it's cool. So my Scarecrow crew is now official. Nice, man. I don't know if this is going to be enough putty. Might have undershot it a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's small. Well, it'll be super paper thin, but paper thin is okay. You know, all right, so let's see what we get. Wow, that is paper thin. Let's see, we, uh, it, it might work, it might not. Sometimes paper thin is good though, because it's less to screw up, but I'm totally just talking that mess because that doesn't look, that doesn't look so hot. <laughs> but we're going to do it. I got to paint this, uh, this commission here. Because I, 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 I don't know if you guys knew this, but all the, um, all my commissions and sales for this month, um, I do, I've been donating a portion of the profits over to Extra Life. So... Just to keep keep them donations rolling in, man. Even when we're running a little thin on the other avenues here, we just keeps it rolling. But yeah, man, what a cool event. We uh, I I was really kind of nervous setting this one up because you know um, 
Comic Quest said, hey, we want to host you guys for Extra Life again this year. Uh, when she, uh, Kelly basically means me and, uh, and Spencer. And I was like, okay, well, I at first I thought it was going to be a paint day. So I'm like, cool, you know, we'll just do it. This will be the fourth quarter paint day. As you guys may know, we do a paint day every quarter over at uh, Comic Quest. Um, so I was like, okay, that would count as the paint day. Um, but she was like, no, we don't want it that to be the paint day. We want the paint day to actually be a couple of weeks ahead. And we want this to be the time that you turn in your, uh, uh, your completed work. So I was like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> um, we can do that. So then the idea was, well, what if we did it a combined paint and play day? And I was like, whoa. That would be a lot of things as well, um, and uh, bounced it around a little bit with uh, Spencer, and we came back and said, you know, let's just make it a play day. Let's make an open play day. We have a lot of games, well, you know, a lot of games that we play, so why not just do that? And it just did, like, on paper, the event doesn't make sense. In fact, it still doesn't quite make sense what that event really was. But it was kind of like my fav one of my favorite things because it was just simply a tour of the games that I like to play, you know. So I don't know. It is what it is. I'm gonna put uh, yeah, I'll put some Twitch comments up here. I don't think we're gonna get any viewers on Twitch, but that's okay. Sometimes people on Twitch they tune in late. But uh, yeah. And, you know, we worked on the logistics of it because I was like, well, I want to do, well, let's, let's back up a sec. I originally wanted it to be a, uh, a guild ball day, right? Yeah, it, it, it worked out. I think it worked out. Okay. Uh, I wanted it to be a guild ball day. It's like, you know, I've got an organized play kit, uh, at the time that we were planning this guild ball was had just kind of come back you know andrew was really one of the main guys to kind of help put guild Ball back on the map andrew cody kevin those guys um were really starting to get into guild ball and uh you know they were like hey let's do guild ball for extra life um so i said okay i could do guild ball and uh and spencer can do um infinity so I say, okay so cool so you know, two people, two game systems, right? And then, uh, and Kelly was like, no, 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 though we want to do Batman too because we have such a growing interest in Batman. I was like, okay, um, sure. You know, and, and to her point, she wanted to get more people into Batman, get a little more visibility around the Batman community and the Batman scene. And so do I, at least in theory. I want to get that, uh, get that going as well. Um, glad to see Guild Balls coming back. It is. Um, yeah, so we got, uh, Guild Ball coming back. We got, uh, and then, and so Kelly wanted to add, um, Batman to the mix. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Two systems. I can run two games systems and, uh, Spencer can run one. That's fine. Um. And, uh, then, you know, then I started to go around for the, uh, prize support and I was like, well, you know, I do have that organized play kit from Guild Ball. Um, and I got a hold of, uh, you know, Ninja Division, John Kadichi, and, uh, he just sent me, I wasn't sure what he was going to send me. I usually just ask him like, Hey, just send me like promotional stuff. Right. Um, and he sent me just a giant thing of Ninja All-Stars. So it's like, okay, I do like Ninja All-Stars, and I think we can make this work. So then I fit Ninja All-Stars into the lineup as well. Um, and yeah, you know, it, it, was, it was cramped, like the entire day. No, no joke, it was cramped, but we kind of made it work. You know, people were cool. I, I got, got a little worried when, um, you know, like... Nelson was there and he was basically basically just hanging out for the first couple of hours. Like I felt bad. I'm like, cause everybody was like, um, you know, the, the guild ball guys were early. They showed up 
and we decided to teach some Ninja All-Stars, like proper game demo uh, with Ninja All-Stars. <laughs> we be bringing back Wrath of Kings back too. Yes, that will also... God, we play too many games, but it's so good. Uh, I need to get my hands on Ninja All-Stars. You have... Oh yeah, you have a clan for Ninja All-Stars. So, you know, I think there are people up in L.A. that play as well. Um, you'd probably be able to find some people up there. If not, you know, you're always welcome to come game with us. Um, yeah. So, we started off with the Ninja All-Stars demo, like a proper demo uh, with Cody and uh, Andrew. Um, and uh, Andrew rolls really bad. That's what we learned. Like, I know we clown me on the Friday night uh, fiasco, like how shitty I roll for uh, for the players that are involved and, you know, they get mad at me, mostly dizzy. Um, and uh, I know we clown me about that, but like I would, I think the show would be completely even more terrifying if we had uh, Andrew at the helm rolling the dice. <laughs> like based on, just based on the fact that I saw the guy miss a five die goal. I saw him miss a four die chip shot. And then with Ninja All Stars, I was like, see, you know, the one thing, you're rolling a lot more dice, and he rolls the dice. <laughs> and it's all bad. Like, he just rolls like one of the worst rolls you could get. One of the worst results in the entire game. <laughs> like, right out of the gate. Uh,. And, uh, and then on the opposite side of that, you have Cody that just nailing all of his rolls. Like the minute he walks up to a crate and uh, opens it and it's the right element every time. <laughs> so they were, you know, originally they were going to play to five and Cody like scored five in like a turn. <laughs> so I was like, uh, let's play to six. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> yeah, so that was fun. We get to you know, get a proper, give Andrew a proper introduction to uh, Ninja All-Stars and Cody. And uh, then we launched right into Guild Ball. Meanwhile, uh, we had Josh and Chris and Evan show up from the uh, SoCal Batman uh, crew. And uh, they started to go at, they started to set up the Batman. And uh, uh, that's when, you know, things really started to get rolling because they had Batman going on that table, we had a couple of tables running with Guild Ball. Um, then I had to play against Andrew's uh, uh, just nas absolutely nasty Brewers team uh, with my Alchemists. And I don't know. I made it a game, kind of. You know, I had a couple goals in there with uh, with Midas, but you know, I gotta admit, it was. I was like scraping it, just scraping to make it work. I think, and you know, Andrew's. I think it was kind of part of Andrew's uh, just allowance, like, okay, I'm just going to let this guy score, because I'm just like, he just like turned vitriol into butter, like the whole, <laughs> the whole thing. I lost the final Guild Ball game because I rolled bad. <laughs> That's a bummer. So you could have, uh, you know, it's not, at that point, it really wasn't about the mist, but the, the gold patch, dude, that is quite nice. Like, I, I, if I was playing, I would have fought pretty hard for that gold patch. It's a pretty, pretty dope patch. Okay, we're going to work on some truffles here. So we got truffles. And truffles has just the pair of horns, actually. Oh, is truffles supposed to have, oh yeah, I guess one of the ears goes down like that. And you got the little horns coming out this way man you know this I know this doesn't sound like me but I'm looking at this going I don't really need to pin that <laughs> but you're like but you always pin it it doesn't matter it's true I no I really don't I don't see a reason to pin that I mean, I can, actually, I do see a reason to pin it. Okay, we're pinning it. So, 
So, yeah, so that was cool. And then, you know, kind of the rest of the day was kind of games of Batman going, games of Guild Ball going. Uh, Spencer had some Infinity going down on the other side. Uh, we got a couple of guys come in for a Batman demo, which I started, but then I really didn't have. I felt bad because Chris had to, like, pick up the ball there and roll with it. Hey, what's up, Demon Jester J? Welcome to the feed. Um, yeah, Chris had to jump in because I was like, God, I have to. I had to handle all the raffles. Like, I had to handle... Well, I didn't handle all the raffles, but I handled, like, the ones... We'll say the ones that were relevant to the games being played. You know? I handled the Batman raffles, the Guild Ball raffles, the Ninja All-Star raffles. So, speaking of which, we still have a box set of Ninja All-Stars that needs to, needs to go... To some lucky person. I'm going to check what our... I should see what my extra life looks like right now. I was expecting a little bit of a bump from uh, from Comic Quest. Because they did take some donations up at the front desk. But I don't know what that looks like. Let's have a look. Mm, I will take them. <laughs> okay... Extra life. 2017. Alright. Okay, and oh, got a lot of a lot of things here. And they got the Twitch page. Let's go to my page. What do I look like? Oh no, I'm still at 895. So that uh, the comic quest, whatever is going on in the front desk, has not kicked in yet. So we'll see. We'll see what's going on there. How many other raffles do you have? Well, let's see. I still have. Um, uh, I still have uh, Arkham Knight. The painted Arkham Knight has not been given away. Um, I still have uh, the Star Lancer from uh, Relic Knights, which has not been given away. And I was gonna throw in, uh, I was gonna throw in the the um, packs miniatures for Relic Knights as well. Cause why not? I mean, let me just do that. And this feed will be good too, cause like I can do some of this stuff for a little bit, and then we can spend a little time on the the raffle stuff. Okay. And. Hmm. I do really like that Arkham Knight mini. <laughs> I could donate <laughs> and try to win my own miniature. Star Lancer is also quite cool too. It's a really cool mini. How do you get in on the raffles? Um, well, the easiest way is to donate to my uh, Extra Life campaign. I'm going to put the link in the chat. Go ahead and do that. And then we'll ju we just run a little, uh, I'll just run a little mini raffle like right here. Um, I'm, I've got this like down to a science now. Like I know I have the little page set up. I have a, a spreadsheet uh, that I knock it down, and then we just knock out that raffle. So, like I'll show you guys some examples of what we're raffling anyway. So, boop, 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 boop. the piggy. Yeah, let me go get the Star Lancer real quick just to show you what it, what like a completed one looks like. It's a really, really fun miniature. Um, and I bought a second one <laughs> thinking that I was going to do something kind of cool with uh, Relic Knights 2.0. I, I love this mini. Raffle, you say? That's right. Like this. I don't know. I may have to... So what, I'm, what I'll do is um, 
for the Star Lancer. You can either have the painted one that I have, or I can send you a brand new kit. It's up to you. Um, but I do, like, we do need to make that final, final push, people, over to 1K. So, and we'll, you know, we'll match the, uh, we'll match things dollar for dollar. In other words, a do one dollar is one entry. Um, I don't know if Extra Life website will allow you to donate a dollar. You may have to donate like a minimum of like five dollars, probably, but I don't know. Not not a hundred percent on that one. Oh, and then let me show you. Uh oh, where'd that pin go? Scares me when pins go missing, because then they end up in your skin somewhere. Buenas noches. What's up, got him? <laughs> Good night, uh, demon. Thanks for uh, tuning in, man. All right. Yeah, so I do have a few items left that... Uh, that we are to raffle off. I also have, I have another Kunochi candy and cola that didn't go anywhere. And also, I don't know who is interested in this kind of stuff, but Wild Space Gabe and Codifier Bra Bray. I don't know how to say that. Whatever. Have you seen the Guild Ball Dark Harvest Zombie Grape? I have. Uh, uh, what's his name has one uh, coming in, uh, Andrew. Uh, and that should be pretty damn cool. Pretty cool. Still. Whoa. Sometimes the gel is just a little too much, people. Corsairs and no Empire, what you got for me? Well, I, got, I do have that uh, Wild Space Gabe. I don't really have anything for no, unfortunately. But uh, I would raffle uh, Gabe and Brahe as a, uh, as a pair because, you know, if you're, it's mostly, I think the appeal there is mostly the collectors. Although as a questing knight, Wild Space Gabe is pretty sick. I'm not sure what kind of rules he'll have in 2.0. But in 1.0, he, uh, um, he had linked. Uh, uh, no, it's, I'm sorry, it's Wild Space. See, it's, yeah. So, not Dark Space, I, I apologize. It's Wild Space Gabe. He is a questing knight for the uh, Star Nebula Corsairs. He's only available um, through packs. It's one of the only actually exclusive miniatures for um for relic knights so i don't know if that means anything for you personally or not but i don't know that is a thing i would totally run them i don't collect board things since my comic book days yeah i mean yeah it's, i've i've uh I've had those guys in uh, in price support for a while, and uh, I don't know. I like them. I, I I have a painted set myself. Tell you what, like I said, if we actually make the goal, and people are donating for it, um, oh gosh, I forgot this guy's got a lot of freaking parts. Oh boy, I hope I have enough pins. Um. Yeah, he does. He does look pretty cool. And I'm going to give you if we do make the goal, I'm going to give you the option of. Well, actually, no, I can't. I take it back because I don't that's not not ready to do that. OK, sorry. Uh, yeah, he does look cooler than Harker. 
I don't know. I don't know. Andrew plays Corsairs too. He may. Uh, I don't know how he his take on the matter. Where's my damn Clippers? There we go. Oh. Like, why does this? Okay, I, f I remember. He does have. This guy just has a lot of parts. Like, I don't even, I think this just, like, goes on his back or something, I forget, or on his waist. Um, let's get this file down. What's his cipher? Oh, his cipher, his cipher is Flesh Reaper. This little, this little guy here. <laughs> He's pretty cool. Flesh Reaper. I couldn't tell you what they do, though. Uh, I, we have no idea what their rules are going to be like in uh, 2.0. But man, those, those might be the only rustic things I keep from the 1.0 days. Like I want to redo the entire, you know, my my entire factions. Me hearties. <laughs> I have a Gabe. It's sitting on my desk. Nice. He looks like licorice gumdrops with wings. <laughs> I'm going to end up house ruling 2.0. Why is that? Why do you think that you're that you're going to be house ruling 2.0? I mean, it's been a while since I looked at the latest latest. Um, it was at least starting to look like uh, that the... Starting to look like the um... God, I can't even think right now. But the Esper, like flipping es Esper, was more of a flipping action than a card management action. Yeah, you still like most of the things, the way things most are the <laughs> English. You still like the way things, most things are done in 1.5. I will actually agree with you. I'm a little worried about the new card mechanic that it's so they that the card mechanic is so Malifaux esque because it's like they're just basic they've kind of turned the uh, the cards into more like dice where you flip you know you just sort of top deck everything you don't held Esper I forget what it does it doesn't it's not quite as powerful as it used to be. Um, Hell Desperate, uh, yeah. But that was probably a good couple of versions ago was the last time I really checked. But I'd noticed like, oh, okay, this smells a lot like uh, like uh, M2E Malifaux. And I was like, eh, I don't know how I feel about that if I'm being totally honest with you. Woohoo! Okay, I st so I'm actually ran short of pinning material. That's crazy. One, two, three, four, five. No, I got it. <laughs> What's up, Greenleaf? Word up, West Side, East Side. <laughs> I don't know why we always sound like like we're like we're coming out of a Vanilla Ice video or something every time we talk with Adam. Uh, I'm not using uh, paper clips. I'm using uh, musical wire, actually, and uh, I like it quite a bit. It's, it's pretty damn cool. I was Adam. We were talking about, yeah, w me and uh, Andrew, aka F Fake Nelson, were talking about you today, and I was like, man, I know he got that battle report out with Ash. I'm like, man, I want a game with Ash. <laughs> But like if I gamed with Ash, he Ash would be so mad. Like he wouldn't be able to upload the video because there'd be too many, like too much swearing. It's just like too bad. <laughs> Paper clips. Gotta be delete. All right, check you later, Andrew. I'll probably be on when you're done, dude. No worries. Let's 
let's see. Ooh, so I'm gonna have to use this like medium sized clipper here. I think that's wrong. Whoa. What was a weird sound outside? Some weird things afoot, you guys. Weird, weird things. Stranger things. That was a really terrible pun. Just unforgivable. <laughs> All right. But yeah, we're getting there. We're getting towards the goal, and I wanna, I wanna get that goal. All right. I did not watch uh, Stranger Things two. I'm going to. I'm going to. I just right now. And I gotta admit, like I am, I get skeptical as all hell whenever there's so much hype around something. And the, tr the I watched the trailer for Stranger Things two, and I didn't like the trailer. I it bothered me i was like whoa like they are leaning hard on that you know ghostbusters tie-in promo like they just they just like oh they, they were gonna bet they're betting the farm on trying to revive the ghostbusters franchise through stranger things you know and i'm like you know what i was a kid in 84 when ghostbusters came out i wasn't i was these kids like these kids are like my age now like from Stranger Things, and I'm like, Ghostbusters was cool, and I loved Ghostbusters when I went to the theater. But you know who liked Ghostbusters? Adults liked Ghostbusters. Well, kids thought they were kind of cool, but they never had costumes that good in '84. They didn't have like traps and shit. Like people didn't, at least for where I was from, people weren't like that into doing costumes. They were, like that wasn't a thing. Like, you had to be, like, really out on the extreme edge of something to really be down like that for a movie like Ghostbusters. And the other thing about Ghostbusters is, like, people, um, like I was saying, Ghostbusters was regarded more of a, like, a, you know, an SNL-style sophisticated, though more sophisticated, comedy, uh, horror. It was a really sharp movie, um. But I don't know. It just seemed it just seemed contrived, man. It's when I saw it on the trailer. It's like it just like I don't know. I can't be hating on something I haven't watched yet. But I can hate on the trailer because I did watch the trailer. So so simply from the trailer point of view, I was not impressed. And I was like, oh god, they're just gonna it's just it's Stranger Things is just sort of like a, a member berry like bait and switch. Member um <laughs> it's what it kind of seemed like uh okay i'm pretty sure this little guy goes right there yeah i was rocking popeye costumes in the 80s and he-man he-man was dope he there i don't think uh the studios have figured out how to revive he-man or they would have done it already I mean, they, they tried with Dolph Lundgren, and I was like, okay, I could kind of see Dolph Lundgren as He-Man, so I was kind of down, and then they just did the absolute worst job with Skeletor in that stupid live-action movie. The, well, the live-action movie was really stupid top to bottom. It was, like, really inexcusable. I still need one more pin, don't I? That's crazy. Why do I need six pins for a model like this? Steam forged? Why? Oh, we'll do an unboxing too in a, a little bit. Hint, hint. Andrew's gonna miss it. But we'll do an unboxing. It'll be dope. Uh, 
Look at that. That's a lot of work to get a pin on there. At least the movie didn't have... A oh, no! I would have paid cash money to see Adam in the pink cutoff vest. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> like, I wanted to be true to the source material <laughs> if you're going to do that. <laughs> uh, okay, so that thing goes there. Where does this axe go? I think this axe kind of goes... Pretty sure it's going to go like on the hip here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to go there, probably. Probably going to go like that. I think. Where's, let's look at the, let's get the card art. The Carrot Ert. Which I've somehow managed to misplace immediately sitting in a chair. I didn't even move my ass off the chair and yet I cannot seem to find it. That's that's like a new low in terms of being bad at keeping things. How is it, like, how, how is that even possible? I didn't even move. There are two places this could be. Truffles. Like, truffles and bis brisket, their cards are right with each other. These guys are what? I don't even. Okay, I'm gonna. I am gonna stand up, cause that's just sad, man. I need to hang it up if I can't. <laughs> like what the hell? Da, 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 da. Nope. Nope. Maybe yes. Uh, you know. Maybe get swallowed up. I could be sitting on it now. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good theory, though. If I can't, if I couldn't find it, I'm sitting on it. Wait, here it is. Just dumb. All right. So veteran ox. He looks like the axe is kind of off to the side there. So that's where that axe goes. Mm. And this is kind of ridiculous, like pinning little weapons like this. It's a little ridiculous. So I'm making fun of myself for doing this, but... Hey, we all got problems, man. Here we go. Do -do 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 -do. I will give Stranger Things a chance, though. Like I've told a number of people that want to be able to talk to me about Stranger Things too. I told them I would sit down and watch it. I think it'll I think it's good. I think it'll be good. I'm just you know me. I'm just skeptical. I'm always skeptical. Especially when hype is concerned. I you know, I'm one of those people that thinks that, that you know, the consumer is rewarded um, by making something when we make something popular, we're rewarded with a, an inferior sequel. 
you know, we're, we're rewarded with an inferior follow-up that they put less and less actual quality in the newer products because it, the, uh, all of the consumerism is based on, uh, is based on, uh, addiction. I know we're going into some weird territory. I get like, you can sense it, right? You're like, Oh shit, we're going into some weird territory. <laughs> That's how I see it. Okay? I see it like, um, <clears throat> you know, for example, your phone, right? The phone is probably the easiest, like, thing to point out here. You have a phone. I needed some Diet Coke. One sec. Like, you have your phone. You, you bought your phone back in the day. A little flip phone, whatever. You bought your flip phone. It might have been 200 bucks. Good little phone. Reliable. You know. Had not too many features. But it had enough features. Um, that you liked it. And. Um, you know. And so you really liked your phone. And then. And you know. As phones started to offer more features. Uh, you know, we started getting sold on this idea of smartphones. Smartphones are really cool. I love smartphones. Like, I still love smartphones. I got my my S7 right there next to me. Um, but it was when I bought my, my S4, my Note 4, that things, I noticed, things started to change. Especially with uh, the iPhone. It's like, you know, we're just going to keep making new ones. So, the, the Samsung Note 4 still i was still my favorite phone of all time like uh, it had you know had the note capability so it had the stylus um had a really really good processor um had good big video screen that which was kind of a thing that the note 2 brought in originally was like this really big phone with a big viewable screen um and then it had all the good stuff it had removable battery it had removable storage, or I'm sorry, um, upgradable storage. You could, you know, you could do a um, a micro SD in there. It had a lot of good features. And then when it went to, when Samsung went with the uh, the S5 and the Note 5, they took those two items away. They took away the removable battery and they took away removable storage. And uh, they also, I, I forgot to mention. Um, during the four was when your carriers started to, you know, give you this concept of like wanting five, six, seven hundred dollars for a phone, but you don't pay that. You just you lease your phone. The whole idea that you don't own your phone was crazy. So when I bought my my Note 4, it was actually a friend of mine sold it to me. Because it was like his recommendation. He's like, I know you, you're going to want it. You're going to want the Note 4. Note 4 is good. It's got a good processor. You know, everything I just said. And so he takes me up to the register to, to buy it. Um, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you only have to pay sales tax today. And we're just going to include it on your monthly. And you're going to lease this phone for, you know, 18 months. Right. And then you can upgrade to another phone. And I was like, what kind of shit is that, man? Like the phone was like four or five hundred bucks, and it's like no, I I just want to own my phone. Can I just own my phone? And they, everyone in the shop looked at me cross-eyed, like, wait, why not just pay the thirty dollars a month for eighteen months and then you can get a new phone? I'm like, no, I, I just, I just want to own my phone. Like, what? When did that change? Why can't I just have a freaking phone, and I'll pay. I'll even pay like insurance for it so that you can send me a new phone, but I'm not paying monthly. Like I don't need to talk to Mike in finance for a fucking phone. Like just give me <laughs> anyways. So I kind of read them. I, I, that, that was actually what I said to them. Just sell me the fucking phone. You have a price when you walk up, you know, when you're looking at it on the shelf, it has a list price. I don't need to know. That it's going to cost me another 20 bucks a month for 18 months or whatever. I, I want to own the phone outright so that um, 
so that I don't have to upgrade, so that I'm not beholden to you. I like this phone. I want to keep it, but let me like actually own it. Uh, so that's what I did with my Note 4. I owned my Note 4. And I was like, okay, I didn't like the Note 5. I didn't like the S5. Uh, my wife got those. And, uh, you know, her being a social media person, um, you know, she's she's addicted to social media the way I am. And um, we just, I guess we just have different, we, we have different activities, I'll say. Um, like, she got that phone and, like, immediately ran out of storage space because you couldn't upgrade it's like oh you can get cloud space well you'll well, you'll be reliant on us for your own space and like no i don't want to be well i i want to have i want to just get my own um sim card or i'm sorry my own micro sd and just be able to put shit on it as i like and dump it off onto my computer or dump it off into an external hard drive um i just why can't I just do that? Why can't I just be independent? Why can't I just make my own decisions, be accountable for myself? Why can't I do that? Um, but instead, you know, they kept pushing this trend that, okay, we're gonna we're gonna make you dependent on the latest and greatest, right? You, and you don't even get to own it. You're just subscription. It's just subscription-based consumerism. And they do it, they're doing it with everything now. You don't own anything anymore. It's just, um, you lease everything. The companies own everything, ultimately. And they try to couch it in such a way that it's like, no, 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 we're making it easier for you. We're making it more affo affordable for you. We're making it better for you. You'll always have the latest and greatest technology. Yeah, but that's, you're, you're in my opinion, you're breeding dependency, right? You're you're creating the ideal consumer. The ideal consumer, in the eyes of a stockholder or, uh, you know, a bean counter or something like that, they they want a consumer base that is just absolutely willing to con constantly and continually fork over cash. Because it's a revenue stream. It's a, it's a, it's a, especially if you use addiction to get them into, you know, your product. It's a good revenue stream and it's good for stockholders to know that income is always going to come in, that the, the companies are going to be profitable, you know. I know, I just talk a gang of shit, don't I? I just do. But that just, I just hate that. It just, like, why, why, why did you just take a bunch of decisions away from me? Why did you just take a bunch of autonomy away from me? If I like, if I have a good product and I like it, I don't need to be beholden to you. I don't need to be beholden to my ISP. I should be able to just get up and walk out whenever I want and have my phone because I bought my phone with my own money. That's how things work like you, <laughs> but I really do feel that way. Like, I really do feel like we are being conditioned as consumers to live with this idea of basically perpetual debt and, and reliance. So we're being treated that way in the in the the free marketplace but we're also you know i also feel like we're being treated that way with government that's like oh you know what this is an injustice let's just let the government fix it for us let's just let's just rely on the government yeah 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 yeah. the government will, will take care of you it's fine they won't let they won't allow this to happen to you the government is going to take care of you you know uh and as long as you subscribe to the government well there you go you just you, you, we're just going to breed these perfectly dependent, perfectly compliant little consumers. God, I sound like the old fucking crazy old man. Go ahead and say it, man. I sound like the crazy just dude that's going to be like locked up in his log cabin. Like, the world is doomed. And I just sit in there like, I want to buy my own cell phone, you young piece of shit. 
something like that, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I, 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 but even, I will, I will be honest with you guys, like, even I understand that, and I'm not a freaking marketing guy, but at my work, I'm like, you know, you know what we need to do, what we need to figure out is how to get subscription-based consumerism on our side of things, because if we can get, if we can get consumers to be hooked on what we're selling um, and just give us money every month, that's amazing. The hell? You would know. I think the axe goes there. I think it goes right there. It looks like it does. Welcome back, uh, Blade Wolf. I don't know. It. I just, yeah. It, it, I know it sounds weird. I'm not asking for your acceptance here, but give it some thought. Like, think about what kind of consumer, like you're you're being conditioned to accept terms like that that you don't own anything anymore, but you're the consistent. You're just a flow, an endless um, cash flow, uh, you know, cash flow stream that they're that they need and that they want to build perfect little uh, cash flow streams out of your children too. You know, they want, oh, here we go. It's like, oh my God, they're going after the children. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they want people, they want you to just have this basic level of acceptance. And as long as they can maintain that basic level of acceptance and that you just assume everything based on a worldview and you don't ever challenge anything around it, well, you can be very easily manipulated, very easily controlled. And I do feel that at least it, it, it's, it's not as nefarious as I make it sound, but it's true. Like there, there are marketing people, there are consumer strategists that think up this stuff. Like, how do we just keep, how do we just keep people throwing money at us constantly, consistently, reliably? And how do we make more of them? Because, you know, we want to have all the people, you know, subscribed to our service. We're going to have all the people, um, the, you know, beholden to us such that when we do want to make changes, it's going to be very easy because it's like, well, what are you going to do? They just keep making an iPhone every year. And, uh, you know, if you have an iPhone that's three, three or four years old, then eventually what they do is they make it so that, uh, your phone becomes obsolete. They make that op They stop supporting that operating system because they're already on to the next bigger and better thing. Um, I don't know. What do you think? It's a lot of think that I'm throwing at you. It's a lot of think, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe it's not interesting. We can always talk minis. That's the other, that's the other side of this. Um, and these are hard to figure out because I don't even know. No, it just doesn't seem right. This seems right. A little dead air there. Just a little bit of dead air. We figure out how this homeboy is supposed to go. It's like, yeah, I think that's correct. He's just kind of shackled and running that way. Oh, I gotta, before I forget, I gotta throw the axe on too.
That is a big ass pin for just an axe on the on the hip of some dude named Ox. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, last night, that thing, that got interesting. <laughs> I watched a little bit of the Friday night game back, and uh, let's just say that the game ends, and there's still a good hour or so of bullshitting that happens afterwards, and I'm listening to it, and I'm like, man... I sound like the worst person ever. <laughs> oh God, it was that I'm in, I was I'm legitimately embarrassed by some of the things I was saying. Wait, that's wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. These are on the wrong. There we go. Uh oh. I felt the knives move. Okay, so this model kind of sucks to put together. Woof woo woo! <laughs> Yeah, this model kind of sucks to put together. What is going on there? Did I just not drill it? It seems like, ugh. like why is that giving me such a hard time? Should be okay. <laughs> what the hell is going on? This doesn't seem like, there we go. That's a little bit better. Whoa. Whoa, sir. How come this super glue isn't really staying? It just seems more like cement. It's not really sticking. Whoa. Uh, Let's, uh, okay, so there we go. Let's go ahead and I'm going to do this. And I don't, I hate this quick set stuff. It's just so gummy. All right. So now. Okay. Looks like, uh, who's that? I think Nelson's doing some painting. Let's look. Let's look. Cause it was on, like, it's, it's making my, it's making my thing do the thing. What is all this? That looks cool. Good job. Good job, Nelson. Cool. I like it. Yeah, it looks great. What I don't even what do you I don't even understand what do you mean? Why you even compare I don't get it. I'll just say it looks good. Woo Okay. You like that? <laughs> Alright, there. See? See Nelson? 
Relax, man. Don't even worry about it. Okay. And now let's... Uh... Weathering is... Like, weathering effects, I think, are is stupidly easy. Is it just me? Like, I know people, like, make a big deal about it. Like, I do... Um, like, when I do uh, certain terrain... Like, I really like the Reaper Bones um, dumpsters. Because you can't... It's impossible to get that wrong. Like, a Reaper Bones dumpster. Because it's just... You just paint it, and then you just weather the shit out of it. And it doesn't really... I don't know. It never really has to be complicated. You just make it look shitty until you're done. And then you're done. <laughs> I know that makes sense. I know it makes sense. All right. Do a little plastic putty here. I love plastic putty. It just makes stuff like this much easier to deal with. There we go. And you just sort of whoop, wipe the excess off. But it's a good, just such a good gap filler. So we're going to put that in there. That looks good. Not really sure if that looks okay or not. It looks okay. All right. I'm going to figure out how to balance this guy. He's going to be like that. So I think it needs to go right there. Throw it across the floor a few times, ding it up. <laughs> no, I mean, people like, oh, you got to use the pigments. On your, you use these special weathering paints. No, you don't. You just tease us. Like, you just, you can make... You can make crusty looking paint. You know how? You just don't thin it and you crust up that paint. Like you cake it and then as it's starting to set up, you move it around. It's not, this is not rocket science. Um, it's cool when people do really good weathering effects. Don't get me wrong. It's cool. But I don't, I think we make more of a, a big deal of it than it really is. You know? Everybody is, you know, there's no, what I'm trying to say is, there isn't like a pro weathering effect guy. Like they're just, they're just people who use it more. That's all it is. It's not, I don't know. Could be me. Could be me just being wrong about it. Um, I guess I may have to get that suicide box squad, that squad box eventually. Yeah, because it's a good deal. Like it's a stupidly good deal. <laughs> All right. So let that dry. Ooh, gotta make sure when you've got like tiptoe things like this, you gotta make sure that the the center of gravity is correct. Okay. This is a totally now. This final one is tough because you know this has only been setting up for about an hour so it's going to be still really really squishy <sighs> they may put out a resin two player yeah maybe yeah i could see that that's a possibility but you just can't really i don't know night models can't really tell where the, what they're thinking and where they're going they always just seem to throw us for a loop okay so there's that. Whoa. And then the scary part here is because you basically have a layer of drying putty between you, between your model and its base. So you're gonna have to press down somewhat hard and let the let the glue actually make contact with the plastic part of the base and like let it actually dry. Yeah, you're still waiting for the Harry Potter announcement. Yep. Okay. So our models are built. Let's let them dry for a minute. And then we're going to stick them on the little holders. And we're going to spray them up. We're going to prime them. But yeah. I don't know. He did a great job. I'm looking at it right now. 
It looks fantastic. I couldn't do a better job than that. Weathering is weathering. I really actually... I think it's cool. I don't know. Yeah. Weathering is weathering. It's good. It's just, you know, it's the employment of it. That's... Uh, those are words. <laughs> okay. Let's see. I need three holders. And I will... Well, who knows when I'm actually going to finish those Ninja All-Star guys. Here's two holders. I need a third holder. That's kind of a holder. Okay, you guys are going to have to forgive me because these are all different heights and stuff. So we're going to kind of be all over the map there. Yeah, I should say. So let's go ahead and do that brisket right there. She's pretty secure there. And I'll do ox, better an ox here. And this is not very secure, so I'm worried. I'm worried that that, hopefully that holds. Not sure. Hey, what's up? Welcome back, Andrew. And then we got truffles. Truffles de pig. We're going to mount truffles on there. Now truffles, you can actually, we're going to color block. I think we will. We'll have time. We'll color block these. Uh, but we're going to prime them first, and then we're going to color block them. Boop, boop. I need to clean out my airbrush okay <laughs> yep so let's get some primer down and then I got a little treat for you, especially since Andrew's back. I want him to see something. Got something cool, man. Just chill out. We'll get to it. It's gonna be it's gonna be dope. I think. We'll see. <laughs> Ugh. Sorry. Cleaning out the airbrush. Should I use the? I should actually use the other airbrush for the big prime job. Let's do that. And then I can just save this one for color blocking. I like that plan. Let's do that. Well, at least I've cleaned the needle on this one. Ugh. There we go. Let's do that. Did you see the Plastcraft scenery of the jail yard? I haven't. I'm a big fan of Plastcraft uh, scenery. Plastcraft terrain, I should say. Super cool. Alright. So we do this bad boy. I just replace that. I know, it's, it's on a quick disconnect. So you're like, well, why do you do that? Because I only have one working, uh, not the disconnect part, but the bottom part of the trigger. I only have one working one of those. <laughs> Look up Beasts of War. Cool. Do we have to listen to Justin from Beasts of War describe it in what I can only say is possibly English? <laughs> I, I like Beasts of War, but... I cannot understand that, dude. It's beautiful, you guys. It's 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 beautiful. I have this place called train. It sounds like a like a like you're kind of drowning. <laughs> it's a beautiful, you guys. <laughs> you're like what the? What are you talking? Uh, I play with relic nuts on with Starnibula curses. It's beautiful. <laughs> Like, what the, what the fuck is this guy saying? 
Is it just me? <laughs> He's what a brewer would actually sound like. Yeah, he what he is. But I almost think like they play up the accent even more just to make it unintelligible. <laughs> I don't know. Guys, Guild Ball. What do I have ever greens? I like the leader of Bruder. Favorite players are Tupper, Hooper, Steve. I even like the Stalker. It's beautiful. <laughs> Those models are amazing. <laughs> God, it's so easy to amuse myself. <laughs> Am I just, am I crazy? But that's what he sounds like. Like, don't get me wrong. Again, I like them, but I can't understand that fool. And when they're talking about, they talk about the, the, the games and the miniatures in a very generic, like in a very general sense. It's almost like, you know, you took your mom shopping for miniatures and she's trying to describe, oh, let me just tell you something. It was angelic. I really like it. You're like, okay, what do you like about it? Well, it's quite nice. And it's a miniature of wargaming. Yeah, we get that. But, like, what what do you... You know? What do you like about the rules for this? Oh, well, it has a really high card stat. Well, which stats are high? It's... You know, it's, it's it looks like a tank. Therefore, I assume it has armor. Like, um... Great. That was... Insightful. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> what the fuck is the matter with me? <laughs> well, my mom is Asian, so it'd be just be super funny. Why you buy this thing, you guys? <laughs> Why it costs twenty dollars for one piece? Oh my God, this is a small piece of metal. There's less metal than it in my fork. My my fork only costs two dollars fifty cents at the supermarket. <laughs> what the hell this model got three swords? I know some people watching this may be getting tired of the Asian accents that Andrew and I do, but we don't get tired of it. Therefore, it will always be a thing. We will always do that. And if you don't like it, it's okay. Hit the thumbs down. Say, tired of you guys sloping it up with your silly Asian voice trope thing. You know many things I can buy with this money. <laughs> Oh, man. I mean, this is a really... It's a cool pose. It's a cool dynamic pose. I get that. But... It's just a... It was a weird assembly. It's a very three-dimensional pose. With a lot of just loose chains and... Be right back. It's the Naruto run edition. It is. He is kind of running like Naruto. Everyone knows you run super fast with your arms directly behind you. You run like this, you guy. I really, I really like the way he runs. It's beautiful. Oh, let me tell you, the butchers. They have a lot of noise. <laughs> and it seems like they really like to cut the meat. Oh, Justin. Never change, dude. I like you, Justin. I don't mean to... I'm not trying to, like, seriously come at you, man. I just think it's funny.
I just think it's funny. It's okay. It'll be all right, people. This one here looks like a pig. You know, I eat pig in the morning. Also like it with my sausages. There we go. There we go. Alright. It's old because a pig's a mate. So why would butchers, butchers have that? I'm just going to read your comments. In Justin speak. This is Justin. I love playing Guild Bowl. Yeah, what's the object of Guild Bowl? Well, you'll take a bowl. And you score points. Okay, how do you, how do you score the points? Well, you have golds, guilds, and the guilds, the guilds play against each other. Yeah, I, I kind of gathered that from the the name Guild Ball. <laughs> it's a little evident from that that that's what happens. That you have these guilds, and they play some sort of sport. Okay, let's give that a second, and we're gonna go in with the gray, the next part of the primer. The next, next part of the primer. <laughs> I amuse myself way too easily. This is true. I just sit back here and enjoy this shit. I feel like they show up to work and get on their phone like 30 minutes before the interview to look up what the heck they do. I that's I agree. I mean, you, you can tell that there are some games that they play at least nominally play like Infinity. They can you can kind of tell that they've played it a couple of times. But when they did Relic Knights Week, I was like, do these guys have these guys even seen Relic Knights before? Do they even know? It was cool that they did it. Like. That was kind of cool. Peace of Wars did a Relic Knights week. Um, but, like, you could put, like, Wrath of Kings in front of them and tell them it's Relic Knights, and they would, oh, I really like this one because it has a mask. <laughs> Those are the comments. I really like, uh, I think it's beautiful. It's a really good. On the flip side, they do normally get interviews before releases, so it makes sense they don't get info easily. Yeah. I don't know. Well, like, what are we expecting? These guys cover, uh, you know, they cover dozens of games. But even then, man, like, I could cover dozens of games, man. And that ain't my, that ain't my career. I don't know. I don't want to turn this into, like, games journalism again. Games journalism is a whole other just ball of shit, essentially. <laughs> okay. This is Veteran Ox. What I really like about him is he's a veteran, meaning he's played a little while. He's no spring chicken on the field. What I like about him is he has these chains. I think it's because he was building a railroad and then he ran away. That must be what it is. He just asked, 
We're just asking you, do a little research before you just... I know you don't have time to do it, because you have professional YouTube TV time things that you have to do. I get that. But, like, look some shit up. <laughs> He's no longer a calf. He's now a full-grown ox. Yeah, that's... Okay. But thank you for that. <laughs> That would be like me trying to talk about Magic the Gathering cards. Uh, this card is good because I'm reading about it. And the artwork is really cool because it, it takes me back to a place. It feels really magical. Like I feel like there are actual wizards dueling when I see these cards. That would be like my, uh, you know, like my job was to talk about magic cards and I know about enough as much of magic as I currently do I can't wait to sit down and flip cards in front of another person and explain to them how good this card is wow you really need it with a specialized deck and you really got a plan to use the card so I could just say it like it's, you're just kind of like faking your way through it, through the, the dialogue. And you're, you've got the, you know, one of the creators of magic in front of you. And like, you just don't give a shit because you don't actually play magic. That would be me. That would be the, the moral equivalent of me doing some of this stuff. Okay. But my trap card is so good. <laughs> oh. Did you see the useless... <laughs> okay, can canvas time for canvas to jump in. Did you see the useless cunt from either Kotaku or Polygon? Don't remember which, trying to play the Doom demo. Jesus Christ, it was embarrassing. <laughs> I, I watched some of that. I, I watched it, uh, uh, people show it. Like as examples, uh, the other one was the the Cuphead tutorial, and the guy couldn't play the tutorial. <laughs> like he couldn't figure out how to how to uh, jump dash. <laughs> You're like, that's your job, dude. That's your job. You're oh, like, God, my cat scares the shit out of me. Jeebus. Yeah, I get it. One sec. I, you know, I'm, what the, f like, that scared me. My, the fact that my cat can open, just open doors. You guys know. Like, he just forces his way in here. He's, you know. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. So now... By the way, what's up, Canvas? Yeah, did you guys hear him? Your little uh, Ramsey's talking there. Yeah, okay. Uh, the thing I really like about white primer is it's lighter than dark primer. <laughs> Those, that's the you know that is the insightful commentary that you can look forward to when I'm talking about this kind of shit. I've seen Octave's cat break through the door fully clean. Yeah, that's what he just did it. He just did that. Cat is persistent. He's a persistent little little bastard. Little bastage. Alright, so. A little bit of white. I mean, it is a super cool pose. I'll give you that.
And Vet Brisket is just a really cool model straight up. She got some junk back there. Look at that. She got a little bit. The the original brisket, I love that sculpt. Because she's got a little bit of she's just got a little bit of a belly. Like it down there, and like people were thinking she's pregnant, and like, no dude, she's a butcher. Like she just she gotta have that meat, yo. Alright. Anyway, let's let this uh, dry a little bit. Clear out my airbrush. And then we're gonna we're gonna do a little unboxing. Cause I'm pretty sure something dope came in today. Okay? While I was out there trying to extra life and shit. Come on man. People. Let's let's raffle some things. Okay, quick break. It's eleven sixteen. Yeah, let's take a quick little break. Let that let that prime coat dry. Whoop whoop. And let's do the damn thing. All right. So okay, so I got a thing in the mail. It's from the UK, and I've been waiting on this for a while now. Let's open this bad boy. Let's see what we got. A box is all jacked up. This is like it's seen some shit, man. My camera's in too deep to really see, but here we are. All right. Ugh, packing peanuts. I hate packing peanuts. I like what's in this. Okay. Quiet, Mr. Airbrush. Alright, Maine. So check it out. Forged from steel. Let me see if I can get the camera to back out a little bit. Bonk, 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 bonk. Right? This is the Blacksmith's Guild. Soon to be in your store. In a minute now, let's pop these open and have a look at the minis. If I had gotten these sooner, I would have painted them up and thrown them in that extra life shit. For real. I would have done that. Anyway. Oh, let's have a look. I love how they new do the new boxes now. Because it's like... If, if this is all you play, you just bring this box with you. And it comes with the... Whoa. And you know, you don't you're probably not gonna use the health wheels. I don't really use them. But they're nice to have. Alright. So let's look at the minis here. So they look pretty dope, man. Look at that. Bam bam. I what I don't like is I don't like this that they're on these bases. You have to you're gonna have to work to get them off like I would do these guys on um, uh, I have some um, uh, some steel plate bases I would use and just make the whole thing like steel plate but in case you haven't noticed I'm not planning on keeping this team I'm gonna paint them we're gonna play a couple games with them see if we like them but I don't have a I, I'm really not intending on keeping this team I'm probably gonna eBay it or uh, sell it to somebody after I'm done painting it. All right, and and you got this. She's got a little crossbow there, so a character outside of the engineers with a crossbow. The qual the sculpt quality is pretty damn good. The faces, I don't know. Uh, oh, Nelson, I hear you like Guild Ball. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, this guy is dope. 
You have so many sword, you guy. Well, are, okay, I don't know anything about this team. Like, I've looked at their cards before and whatnot. But uh, here we go. We're going to Beasts of War this unboxing. Okay, so these are the Blacksmith Guild. And I really like them. I think they're really good. What I really like about them is this one has a lot of swords. And you can see he has the Blacksmith symbol. They're on the shield. The other thing I'll point out is they have armor because they're blacksmiths. This is really important information as I unbox this. Okay, so then you get that. This one here, I really like him because he looks almost like a robot, but he's totally enclosed in his armor and he doesn't even have like working hands he just has his fists to pound you pound you into the ground with him no for real though this is kind of dope it's called i do like this like there you can have a lot of fun with the the hammering on these make it look like they've been you know freshly hammered the, the armor she's a girl running I think it means that she's quite fast and she has and again another shield here her hair is parted down the middle it's an important thing to point out I know a lot about blacksmiths when I play blacksmiths I always think what would a blacksmith do in this situation and it helps me this one here, he has a big hammer. On, he's on a he's on a wee base. It's not the same base as these. No, for real though, a lot of forties. You notice that? A lot of big base models. I mean, obviously that's what they want. They want you, you want blacksmith models to kind of take up space like that. So you got these six. I heard you like yo. I got swords for your swords. You got oh, the, their guild balls hot. It's pretty dope. I do like it. And then their little obstacle here. It's fun. This is all fun. Good stuff. Good stuff, Steamforge Games. Good job. Just please, next time, get it out to your pundits a little earlier. I know there was a problem. Is the goal. That's also quite cool. Here you go. Like, if you want to learn how to do non-metallic metals, this is, <laughs> this is what you're going to do, man. That is dope. So... Little unboxing for you. Look at some of the blacksmiths. They're looking pretty sweet, man. They're looking pretty dope. All right. So I'm gonna put these guys away for now. They're gonna be. They're going to be, I'm going to do one project before them, one really quickie. After, so I'm going to finish this commission, then I'm going to do a quickie, and then I'm going to come back. Pretty dope. Hope you guys like the uh, little blacksmith teaser there. All right, let's get back to the painting, B. Boo boo. What I do with my... Okie doke. So now we're just going to do some general color blocking on these. Um, because the, the, the client wants black and red as the color scheme, we're just going to do, we're going to block most of the red and then we're going to block basically the pink on the, uh, on the pig. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. Anybody else working on anything? Or are you guys just chilling? Are you just chilling? Okay. So we're going to need some reds. And this always gets a little interesting. I like carmine red as the base coat, as the as the, the kind of the primary color. So we just go a little bit deep, darker first. Gory red. I wonder if there's. Yeah, I wonder if I have anything that's even even darker than gory red. Like I can't even do that. That's probably kind of dope if I did that, and then the carmine red over it. Or is that too? Is it too brown? Because these are too close. Like you can't. You're not really gonna see much going from there to there, but you might see something going from there to there. That's the thing about airbrushing is you do, like you do jump up your shades quite a bit. Hmm. Maybe I should use a technical paint. What do you guys think? This is also, this is probably what I'm going to do right here. Dried blood like that. That's hot. You're building Wrath of Kings stuff. Wrath of Kings! Wrath of Kings, you guys! Alright, and... I need... I want a bright... Um, maybe I pick like an orange? Maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this is not going to make sense to you guys. It's going to look weird, but that's, that's what I'm doing. All right? We trust the process, right? Whatever, you guys. <laughs> we trust the process. All right. In fact, I can even use this as a base coat for the pig. No, I would... Uh, uh, Maybe. Let's see how it looks. And let's change our airbrush and get down to the to our little detail airbrush. What do you think about my in-depth analysis of the Blacksmith Guild? Hopefully. By the end of the video, you knew exactly how the blacksmiths play, and you got to know what an expert I am on it. <laughs> I gotta stop talking shit. I gotta stop talking shit. You'll never make it in this business. You're just mean to people. I know. Alright, here we go. They never should have gave you money. Okay, now we're going to mix this up. It's actually a lot lighter than I thought that was going to be. So I am going to use this as the undercoat for the pig. $10.99, What do I do with that other? Whatever.
Octave, how do you base the Wrath models? Um, I usually, because they have those like divoted bases, I would like take gravel and fill them up. Um, the easy thing that you, you should do actually is you'll notice that the, the Wrath models themselves are on these little pegs, right? So what you should do is actually glue the peg directly down into the base and then come back and fill it all in with the with your with your gravel or whatever you feel like using. That's my suggestion. So I'm just slowly going to build up this red. Pretty dope. She looks like Carrie right now. I don't know. Anyone watching me on Twitch at all? I have three. I got three viewers on Twitch. What's up, Twitch people? Thanks for tuning in. I don't. Why? Why isn't my Twitch chat working? No. I mean, it should be working. Okay. So there's that. It's interesting spraying with a technical paint because this is supposed to be somewhat translucent and it's actually doing a pretty damn good job of staying translucent as I shoot it over here. Like that actually did it. Look at that. It did a dope job. And you just kind of build up layers of it. As you can see, I'm going to go mostly red. Because when you have a, a color scheme like red and black, the black is very easy to color over the red. So it's better to just default the whole thing to red. And then come back and pick out the areas that are going to be black. back out a little bit get a little more broader color on it cool dang a bunch of viewers just broke out it was tired tired of this mess all right so now we got the pig the pig, you guy. Well, I get to go to bed. I'm beat. Good night, guys. Good night, Andrew. Thanks for tuning in, man. Thank you for your support today. Really appreciate it. That's a good undercoat for that pig, isn't it? That's a good undercoat for the pig. The one thing I really like about this pig is it has spikes on its back because of a harness and it also has a couple of horns you wouldn't want to get hit by those horns does it have a knockdown on too no it doesn't really knock when it tries to enter the doors no i mean does it the playbook does it have a, a knockdown on too oh you know it doesn't even consult a playbook 
Because it's a wild animal. No, I... Never mind. Okay. Check it, check it, check it out. Yeah, lots of people tuning out, so don't worry. We're going to call the stream here pretty pretty soon. I just really need to hit really just two colors, and then they're color blocked enough, I guess, to call it. We'll see. Alright, so now we're going to make a carmine red, and this is going to be really the base coat. So the color, the black man here. <laughs> I mean Batman. <laughs> oh, you're preparing. <laughs> you're working on Batman. <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't be as funny as I, as I think it is. I think it's hysterical. But yeah. Alright. <laughs> and I haven't had anything to drink tonight, guys. Last night, totally different story. As you know. But <laughs> it could just be... It could just be fatigue. It could just be fatigue kicking in for me. And I just think it's funny shit. <laughs> I am the darkness. <laughs> Black. <laughs> I, thought I, just, I thought you were making some proclamation because I was saying everyone's like leaving. <laughs> what? A, oh man. It's just, it's really not that funny. It just is to me. Where's this carmine red I keep hearing about? There we go. Pretty dope, man. I like the red. She just looks like Carrie. Meep, meep, meep. I even kind of like that I carried over a little bit on the blade. Pretty dope. Alright. Meep, meep, meep. Pretty good. Hook it hook. I'm wrecked but James, bitch. Treat your treat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> treat yourself. I love that. So funny. Alright. Here we go. Now here's now we're gonna get a little weird, okay? And this is where things can go terribly wrong. So let's have a look. We're gonna um, I'm gonna go to orange, and this might backfire significantly, but it's worth it because if it pays off, the way I'm thinking it's gonna pay off. I'm just gonna run a little air over ox here. Treat yourself. I love that. <laughs> I'm Rick James, bitch. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I know that joke is stupidly old. 
it's stupidly old and people are embarrassed for me the millennials oh you millennials it's okay <laughs> i thought that shit was funny when it came out and i still think it's funny now all right so we're gonna go with orange fire right here up on this all right Orange fire. Boop. Here we go. Wow, that is really light. <laughs> this could go horribly wrong. Still is fun. Yeah. See? Well, I know you think it's still funny because you were the one that brought the joke up. So. so you definitely think it's funny. And I will agree with you. All right. Boop, boop, boop. Fire. So, you can see a little bit of the hint of the orange there. And I'm just basically teasing out a little bit of the orange there on the peaky peaks. So you can see. nice then you'll see it I'll I'll bring it up here on the the buttock mm. see get a little orange on the buttock now and if you're worried that it's too far, like I've gone too far with the orange, don't because we're going to shade it down. Remember, that's kind of the process. Don't freak out too much. <laughs> On fire. You can see the orange there. See that? There we go. So this is going to be a lot towards the top of the model. Oh, and a little bit kind of sticking out here towards the middle. Should look pretty dope. When we're all done with it. When after all is said and done, you're a winner. <laughs> Lurker reporting in. What's up, Kevin? You know what song I was singing, right? You got the touch. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That song is dope, man. Come on. Remember Transformers the movie when they made a big deal about, like, every time you see the commercials and they had, like, Optimus Prime, but one shall stand and one shall fall. And they, I'm, okay, I know I'm older than everybody, but come on, man. If you were around for Transformers, that was dope. You gotta admit, it was dope. Uh -huh. <laughs> On fire. I'm gonna clean this through. So you can see the orange fire. Boop, 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 boop. It's orange fire. Like that. It's interesting the uh, the smiley. I don't even like like placebo P. I I don't I know I want to call you by your actual name because it makes more sense to me. But I gotta respect that you're coming in as placebo Pete. Like you, that smiley face in the chat looks uncomfortable. It's because he has no chin. That smiley face has no chin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So now I need uh, like a, I need not really a pink color, more like a skin tone. If I had a skin tone, I just kind of highlight 
areas of the pig, that's what we want to do, right? Here's the pig. The pig, because he looks like that's actually, he looks good as far as pigs go. That's a pretty good looking tone, just the single coat. But we're going to give him, uh-oh. Why does it always do that? Like the valve just pops loose all the time. Cause it's on fire. Ooh. Here it goes again. Whoa. <laughs> That's pretty. Oh my. You can hear it popping, right? That's crazy. Why is it under so much pressure right there? All right. All right, back to normal. We're good. We good. Um, let's find a good color here. Maybe that it might be a little too light. Actually, if I dust it properly, it should be okay. That's, that's, not, a, that's not a bad color. What other colors can I use here? This other colors. It's not a good color. Hmm. Yeah, let's use that color. No, wait, 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 wait. Let me trigger some people, and we're gonna use uh, Caucasian flesh. Caucasian flesh? Call me whatever you want, man. I know, but it's like a secret. I don't think I've ever once called you placebo Pete when you've jumped in the, the chat. I like the only time I refer to you as placebo Pete is when someone says like I call you by your actual name and they go who I'm like oh um placebo Pete you know if I'm talking like Facebook or or YouTube or whatever you know placebo Pete that's what I say. Mm -hmm. Alright, so a little Caucasian flesh. Or should I really do pink? I think pink is a little over the top, personally. I think this Caucasian flesh is going to work out just fine. All I really need is just a little bit of highly high highlights. We're not doing big things right now. We're doing little things. <laughs> so I'm just going to pick specific spots that that Caucasian flesh on. That's right, brother. Regis. Regis doing Caucasian flesh. Somebody gets to talk to me about cheese toast. I need a co-host to tell me about it. All right, doing that thing, looking pretty good. That's how we do it. Looking righteous, brother. You hit my vape. <laughs> God. What do you think, man? Like he's looking. Pig is pretty dope. Whoa. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. There we go. Pretty dope. Let's let's uh. Let's do like one more color. Can we do one more color? Let's do it. Then we're gonna hang out for a little bit. I'm gonna see if uh, anybody else is willing to donate to my extra life. 
Because I'm almost there, dude. Like, I need... I want to make this... I want to make it to my 1K mark. Like, I want to make it. So, let's see if... Uh, Let's see if I can make it. All right. Let's run a little more water through the airbrush. So I had a really good kind of a flat gray that I was using um, the last couple of times I did the models. No, it wasn't somber gray. It was like just a regular ass gray. That's the technical term for the color, regular ass gray. There it is. Hands are dark gray. That's a good dark gray. All right, here we go. Dang, the more I'm looking at that Arkham Knight, the more I'm liking it. <laughs> I might just like bid on it myself. I might. Let's see, okay. Okay. Then I'll do, so I'm going to do her boots that color. that color didn't see what I'm doing there she does have black gloves so At least my my version of her has black gloves. Okay. Uh, wondering. I'm wondering if that if this should be black here at this like corset part. It does look pretty hot like that. It does look pretty dope like that. Little, little black to break up the monotony there. I can do a little bit of black here. Pretty cool. Do, 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 do. Okay, so now for Ox. Um, yeah, I guess we'll do like his, his boots and everything. Kind of this black color. His pans are dark gray.
still going. Going to hit the hay. See ya. Good night, Blade Wolf. Thanks for tuning in, man. So you can see what I'm doing here. Just hitting all the blade parts, that darker color. All of the... All of everything that's going to be a metallic at some point. Or non-metallic, but a metallic effect. It's getting that... Getting this color. And finally, I don't know why I'm doing this. Not good precision work. I mean, that said, it's not bad. Not bad for just shooting it off with an airbrush. Without masking it. Black there. If you're just joining us, welcome to Play Painted Live. Let us know what you're painting or what you should be painting. Tonight we're doing a little bit of work here on some Season 2 Butchers. For Guild Ball. I look, Guild Ball. It's beautiful. I really understand these miniatures. <laughs> Whatever, man. Okay. There, he's done. Let's just send him back to the client. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Alright. Woo -woo -woo. Okay. Can I do one more color? Let's do one more color. Why not? Why the hell not? It's midnight. We're going to go to bed soon. But why the hell not? Come and get yours. Come and get your colors we got all the colors baby alright so now we're gonna do this light blue azul which is weird just gonna do a little light blue but hey it happens okay and all we're gonna do here is just gonna go back into those like metal bitty parts and then like create just a little bit of light differentiation that's all nothing too big that some of the metallic coming through on him or the non-metallic effect I should say
So nothing too fancy right now, just setting it up so it looks, it'll look okay once we, uh, once we get going. Likewise, I'm just going to use the three spikes here. Whoa! Kind of borked that up a little bit. It's okay. We can recover. There we go. Not too bad. There, now it's done. We just send it back. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. Well, don't die, ox. Don't die. There we go. Okay. And I don't know, I don't think there's any other, like, color blocking I need to do at this time. All right. Do, 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 do. Any questions or comments? We're just gonna hang out, just do the damn thing. All right. But yeah, not bad. Um, there's not a whole lot of painting to be done here because of the color scheme is so simple. The, the red with the black. I'm just going to paint in some more black. Um, I will come in and shade down the red and really just kind of let it, uh, let the contrast speak. I'm going to hit it with uh, probably a red ink glaze when, it, when the time comes. But not bad, you know. Here's the progress on the first night. wanted to break this guy out again. He's just freaking cool. He is part of the auction. Like I am I am giving this guy away. But I just love him. I think he's just amazing. I had so much fun painting this model too. I don't know. Let's see if we get any takers. If people donate, they want, if they're interested in that, or if they're interested in the the Star Lancer. I do really like the the Star Star Lancer. So yeah. Anywho, I think we're gonna call it, guys. I think I'm gonna go to sleep. But um, I don't know. Let me. Um, I, I, I guess I'll put uh, I'll put the link back up and. If, I, I will auction off these two guys probably tomorrow night and uh, probably the other the other thing too so anyways that is going to do it for this video I want to thank everybody for watching have a good night guys we'll catch you on the next one see ya